Welcome to the 111th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name's Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. On today's video, you're going to have to wait because our adventure took us to Guelph, but you have to watch the whole thing because you're not going to believe what was in my neighbor's window well. I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to wait for the surprise. But before we begin talking about our adventure to Guelph, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. So first of all, let's talk about what May is wearing. And she is wearing her Anguli cowl by Hilary Smith Callas. Now, you saw it as a finished object, but now look at this. I know in last uh, podcast you had said that I was going to wear this podcast where we mm -hmm. talked about that. And exactly. It's great. I love it. It is. It's perfect. It's a really nice weight. This yarn is great. So this is Songbird Yarn and Fibers, and this is her sock base, which is an 80-20, and this is called Blue Jay. I love it. There you go. Thank and you so much. It matches your eyes. It looks Thank fantastic. And I'm wearing um, my Perlis by Romy Hill. And this is a lovely pattern. And it's it can be for fingering weight or um, worsted weight or DK weight. So there's four different sets of instructions. Similar, but the number of stitches and those kind of things. I chose to do a fingering weight, which I'm very glad. I'm not sure this is gonna last till the end of the podcast because it's warm, warm right now. It's light, but oh my goodness, it's warm. It's gonna be great when we get back into winter. Don't want it too soon. <laughs> so this is Ancient Arts Yarns, and this is the Little Nettle, it's always hard for me to say it, <laughs> Little Nettle Soft Fingering. That is a beautiful a yarn. And it's funny because the nettles, um, it blocked out beautifully. Now somebody was asking me about measurements. Now the long side of this, was 42 inches before I blocked it after blocking 52 inches wow and the sides were like 25 and 26 and they were 35 and 36 something like that were the numbers so it blocked out you can see how it opens up all of the lace and it lays really nicely so I've never knit with this um, little nettle soft fingering but I will definitely knit with it again because I really, really liked it. No, you don't have to block these, do you? I didn't block it. It's garter stitch. I could make it looser, but I like it to have body around your neck. I like it. I love it. Thank it you. is. It's yeah. so... That's your and color. that's your color, too. It looks oh, good on you, too. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, we're styling. It's a win-win. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so that's what we're wearing. And next, we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object four finished objects. So what I did was I worked on the 12 Days of Bobbles Part 1 by Stacy Lewis. And I think I'd shown you this started, but these knit up so quickly. Now they could be earrings for me to match her cowl, <laughs> no. um, but these are lovely. And we talked about that maybe they could be for Hanukkah or, or if somebody booth, yeah. does a silver tree with blue and silver. Yeah, they're really it. nice, yeah. So lots done they're plastic so they're really really light um so i think the only thing you have to worry about is keeping them safe because we don't want moths to get there yeah nice but i'm really happy with them and this the nice thing about this yarn um is it's it's a little bit like self-striping yarn but it didn't pool too badly and where it did pool it looked great so right. i'm very happy with that we could also call that the blue jay we could call it the blue jay <laughs> There you go. <laughs> She's got all kinds of great ideas, that's for sure. Um, so that's my first bit of finished objects. Now my next finished object is really only partially complete, but I've got the cross stitch part of my um, beach days finished. So um, there is what it is. Now it needs to be um, pressed and get ready because this is going to become part of a project bag. So. To, that's why I'm saying it's not done, but the cross stitch part is done. Oh, and I nice. really enjoyed it. And I'm just going to show you the back because I was very neat. <laughs> and you don't have to be neat, but I like to be neat when I'm doing that. So I was very happy with that. So I've kind of kept rolling it up, hoping that some of the crinkles will go. 
it's not going to happen. We so just have to press it with a little damp cloth. And you do. You kind of have to get a cloth that's got some give to it underneath and then kind of a tea towel on the top. So I'm going to do that um, because I think in the month of August is when uh, KF Jones of the Bakery Bears is going to design the bag and show you how to sew it. So I'm very happy about that. So those are my finished that, objects. I thought you had another one, though. That was the say to well, you have some of my finished <laughs> oh, okay. objects. So yes, because I'm thinking, Colleen is. I can't believe what you get finished because you are so busy. Colleen gets uh, groceries uh, for her mother. She gets groceries for us. She gets all the uh, equipment for the soap making. Colleen makes the soap. Um, I clean up the soap, but you. She does. Uh, but you make the soaps. Mm -hmm. You make the creams. You make the lip balms. Um, I don't know where you get time to do all of this. Truly, like, and you make me a cow, and you make you like. <laughs> Like I, I just can't keep up. It's all fun. <laughs> that's why. I love it. Is it is fun. It is. Uh, and it keeps her mind busy off her aches and pains. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I've been busy labeling. As Colleen's making these products, we have to come up with some labeling. And it was quite and a... And your labeling is brilliant, by the way. I, it look, makes it look professional. Well, it was quite a challenge to start off with because I wasn't quite sure what to do because there's Canva and then there was... Uh, Photoshop and I'm pretty good with Photoshop yes, because I are. took some courses with mm -hmm. it and just different things um, but it just wasn't matching up with some of the paper so I ended up going to Avery and it, and it seems to be working quite well because you can save your projects oh, okay Excellent. and then you can go back in and maybe one day I'll do a tutorial on how Avery labeling works if somebody's interested that would do brilliant business. yes yeah. because uh, it saved me a lot of time in the end of the day um, so I'm not sure how, ex there's another one, Uline uh, or something like something. Online like, labels. Online labels. I think. And it's another good one, but I haven't really uh, gotten into that. I think it's American or something like Tends that, right? Be, yeah. So we're here in Canada. Anyway, we'll see how it works. Um, so we decided, um, this is the soap. This is actually my favorite one. Mm -hmm. This is uh, our lemongrass soap. And on the back, you have to have uh, all this... I C I I N C I, C -I names, mm -hmm. which are very long names, and mm -hmm. you have to have uh, your email and your phone number and all that kind of stuff. You have to have the weight on the front. Mm -hmm. You have to have it both in French and English of what it actually is. Seven. S seven. <laughs> um, and soap on there, so you have to have both French and English, but you don't have to have the French and English uh, on, on the, the ingredients. Right. And that's just what Canada has as their stipulation. I know mm -hmm. other countries have different things. But, oh, I love this lemongrass. It's just just beautiful. But the label turned out okay. Uh, Colleen kind of wraps... better than okay. It's fantastic. You yeah. wrap the back with something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a nice it's paper. It's a waxed... No, it's not because it's eco-friendly. So it's a paper that will um, not absorb the oils. So right. it's really good. Yeah. And so... Um, it's it kind of nice because this this label will glue onto that and it's right. not gonna you know how sometimes they fall off and right so that, exactly that's good for that so uh, right. the, trying to figure out that was good um, and then you made these lovely creams mm -hmm. which are awesome yeah and then trying to come up with a label for that again you've got to have some stipulations you've got to have the ingredients exactly. you've got to have the weight yeah. you have to have French and English exactly. uh, hand lotion and in French it is a lotion pour les mains there you go and <laughs> And uh, you have to have the weight on there too. So uh, that's your cream, and I love this cream. This one's vanilla, but mm -hmm. you have a lemongrass cream do. too. Yes. And it just goes on your hand, and it just just goes right in. So it you does. do a great it job with that feel too. feel greasy. And we're shrink wrapping those, so like to, to make it tamper proof. Yes, yeah. so nobody can get in there and tamper right. with that. And we have a jar of cream, because if you don't like the tube of cream, we're giving you choices. <laughs> I think I might admit there's more. <laughs> <laughs> um, the jar of cream, again, ingredients on the back with all those mm -hmm. uh, long names, mm -hmm. uh, French and English on the front, and the weight. Mm -hmm. I love these little jars, but mm -hmm. not everybody likes dipping their fingers in right. either. I right. love it beside me. I love how I'm not a cream person. Exactly. I set this beside me on the couch at night, and I'm often putting it on my hands, and it's just beautiful. And once again, we'll be shrink wrapping that as well. Yes, we shrink wrap, so it's like. But it's biodegradable uh, shrink wrap too or something right. or yeah. biodegradable um then we have candles and uh it's been a little bit painstaking colleen and i've also been making candles mm -hmm. and if you haven't made candles before it's quite the process you've got to figure out which wick works uh which wick works with which wax and uh, which fragrance and well. what fragrance and we started off just using soy wax 
And then uh, we changed our blend. We blended in a little bit of paraffin wax, like mm -hmm. a little small percentage. Food grade paraffin. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so anyway, we were trying to come up with all that and that took quite a bit of testing. Finally, we came up with a candle that we're really happy with. Right. Um, and we're going to go with it. And this one's called Olkin Whiskey. And it smells And that smells beautiful. like nice too, yeah. And you know, the smells with, because of the soy wax and that, and we don't use much paraffin at all, right. um, it isn't really a strong overpowering scent. No. It but, just gives you that. Um, yes, yeah, so soy has what's called a cold throw, so it, you can smell it right away, but when you light the candle, it doesn't always... The uh, hot throw. The hot throw is what it's called when you light the candle. So that, that is beautiful. Like, that is beautiful. But oh, I love if that you're scent. looking for that smell when you light it, it doesn't, it's not that. If it's, it's, if it's only soy. So we needed to put a little bit of paraffin in and it's made all the difference. Yeah. And the, the actual wicks. We've tried so many different wicks. So much right. wax. Oh my gosh. Anyway, thanks for listening to that. But, uh, <laughs> it's turned yeah, out I think fine. we've got it figured out. These, we did our test burn yesterday yep. and oh my gosh, brilliant. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on. And those are basically my finished objects because I haven't had time to do anything else. That's right. So it's like, okay, do we need to rewrap this? <laughs> no, we're okay. So I think we are just, we started, you know, we were debating what to do with the soap. Then we figured out how to wrap the soap. We debated what to do with the uh, tubes and the jars and we got that figured out so it's just every little step so it's been a learning process it is. for sure it you is. know thank you to youtube uh, fellow youtubers like uh soap and clay she's awesome she's she goes into real That's details right. about different things and, and ellen, ellen ruth, ruth has been very helpful she's been yep. very and, and many others too exactly. so uh, we appreciate that. So that, yeah, so that side's been busy. Exactly. Good. So those are our finished objects. And next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we do that every time? Every time. Just because it's fun. <laughs> so it is a pair of socks. So I've started making socks because people's birthdays are starting to come up and I need to get organized. Um, so this is Katie Lou's sock pattern by Dragon Pine Designs. And there it is. So there's the one sock that is done. Beautiful colors in the sock. I love that. I've had this yarn forever. You know how I actually have been very good. I've been diving into my stash and I thought, um, there is a store that's called Shall We Knit, and the store was in Waterloo, and then it went to Kitchener. It moved two places. So it moved two places there. We were to both, and now Shall We Knit has moved to Kingsville, which we're going to go visit. Oh, has it? This is from the first of those three stores, <laughs> so that's how old it is. But the reason why I like it is because this Barocco Comfort sock is um, fine nylon and fine acrylic. So when it comes to kids who like to throw socks in the washer and dryer, they're safe. Kids as in young adults. Well, I guess they're older now. Yeah. <laughs> they're still our kids. But though. they're so soft. I know. I mm -hmm. really am happy with it. And the interesting thing, that, I'm sorry, it's a, such a mess, but that's what the ball of yarn looked like. Like, who would have thought that it would be all these lovely Beautiful. thin stripes? Nice. So I've got that much. I've almost done the leg of the second one. So then uh, we'll start tucking these away because we have birthdays in December and February and April and May and September. And then another April. So we just have to start doing that. And I have started making some socks for my sister, but I've already got hers done. So that's good as well. First, no, <laughs> finished object, work in progress, work in progress. <laughs> there we go. So that's my first one. Now my second one is a Laura Nelkin. It's her Lola's kit for July. And she may have a few of these left. I'm not 100% sure I didn't check that. And it's called Engaged. And what it is, is it is a small triangular kind of kerchief kind of thing. And then you, if you can take a look at that, then you do the beading of this and it's a little cuff that slips on it. Oh, well, that'll be cool. And you can change up the colors. It's got all different designs with the beads. Oh, that is she that a, beaded, a beaded cuff? 
It is a beaded cuff. Listen to you. Mm, I love it. Cuff. I, I do like too. That. Now, there's two ways to do the actual kerchief itself. One is to just do some stockinette, which, by the way, you could do. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't like to knit. So, we're not doing plain stockinette. Don't tell everybody that. <laughs> well, you know what? You are. You have such nice tension when you knit, but it's not. You would rather be out in the garage woodworking. Absolutely. And that's okay. Yeah. That's so good because mm -hmm. if I went out to do woodworking, I'd be going, I'm going in to grab my knitting needles because that's going to make <laughs> me happy. Unless you want to pay me a lot of money to knit something, I might. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That would be the biggest I'll surprise. I'll be your knitter out there. You want me to knit something? <laughs> we can, uh, we'll get you to knit something. Okay. You did knit a washcloth one time? I did, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. you're very helpful. You are? She's very helpful. I appreciate it. All right. So either you can do it plain stockinette or you can do it with, um, she calls it the fancy version, and that's exactly how it's spelled, mm -hmm. F-A-H-N-C-Y. Um, and so I love this. Now this it's yarn. It's a nice color, like it's different. It's different. Um, this is Cama Rose Love Tanned, and it is um, linen. So it's a little... Rustic. <laughs> no, it's not. Crunchy. <laughs> it's, it's what they call it when they with linen. They call it crunchy. Okay, not rustic. Not rustic. No, it's not thick, picky. It's not picky. No, no. it's um, what do you call that? Crunchy. No, I wouldn't go. Well, uh, I guess like if you're eating a crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crunchy. So this color, by the way, is cognac, which I think is a lovely yeah. color. Crunchy uh, color. Crunchy color. <laughs> so the nice thing about the pattern is you basically knit until that's all you have. But I think what I'm going to do. To when soften I'm, this up somehow because how could you possibly wear that around your neck well when you wash it it blooms thank goodness yes and then it softens up it would have to bloom a whole lot before <laughs> i put that on my neck <laughs> <laughs> well it will okay trust me okay um it's no cashmere that's all i'm saying <laughs> it is definitely not cashmere but the neat thing about this um i think i like the pattern and the fact that you could make it as big as you want I think I would get some uh, DK weight. I think that's what this is. Yes, some DK weight, maybe a couple of skeins, and make some big, beautiful shawl. That, that would be, be nice. I could make a reading shawl or something yeah. with that. Oh, that's very, very nice. nice. I think I will do with that. With a different yarn, maybe. No? Yes, yeah, with a different yarn. yarn. Something now, that has a little bit of wool in it. I want to say something. And speaking of cuffs, love this cuff. Mm -hmm. But I have to say... Although Colleen is busy knitting, sewing, socks, needlework, uh, making soap, making lip balm, making whatever, I don't know, creams, um, she does have. A, she did have the opportunity to go into the garage the other day. I went in bang, the bang, 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 and Colleen, voila, came out with a leather cuff. Shawl cuff, I think. Shawl cuff. Mm -hmm. Actually, you came out with four or five of them. I did. And do you want to explain what you do in order to do that, or did you? I can. Okay. Um, this actually might be able to do a tutorial at some point in time. So what we have done, because when May is doing her uh, booth at Memory Lane in London, so she buys some things and then so. she, and then she tidies them all up and then she sells them at her booth. So sometimes we're in a goodwill, and so when we're in a goodwill, sometimes I pick up a, a goodwill shirt. here in Canada is like a second-hand uh, hand-me-down or they sometimes call them other things in different yes, countries but exactly. it's like a second-hand store right and so May will be looking for the things she looks for I look to see if there's a, a shirt or a sweatshirt or a something like that that I could have but we were for a little while finding belts so leather belts and then we were well, we were going to, and then we stopped. But we are now back into going to make a shawl cuff. So it just, you have to cut the piece that you need. You have to get the right size snaps, which makes life interesting. And May's helped me out because I needed something that was solid to whack things on. And I was bouncing on this piece of wood, and it was... I thought, what the heck's going on? Yeah. So anyway, it wasn't firm enough. And so now we've got something sorted out. And so... It's shawl working. cuffs. So we'll have to show those on the next podcast. But, absolutely. But um, it's a great idea, and they turned out absolutely amazing. And you just have to make sure you get a good, genuine leather belt that's not too used. And uh, we've been able right. to per, uh, get so many nice, uh, different, unique belts. Exactly. And you can get a cuff for two or three or four cuffs out of one belt, and and different widths and exactly. beautiful. So we're going to be working on that one in our spare time. Yes. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's something that you might want to consider. Exactly. Another so, tip. 
forget I didn't bring one of those down but no. maybe next time um all right now this is going to look like fabric because it is <laughs> so <laughs> that totally go. makes sense um so now this is going to look like fabric <laughs> But it's cut out. No. This is gonna look. This is gonna look like yarn. <laughs> All right. So the plan is, I'm going to turn this into a pajama bag for my great nephew. So he's two. So it's got all the things there. So I'm just going to put a little drawstring in it. And so he can either throw some toys in there or throw his pajamas in there and throw it on his bed. And it would be nice and cute. I, th I so think that's a great idea. How did you come up with that idea? Um, I don't that's know. That's a great idea for kids just to throw their pajamas in. Yeah. Um, it's I have bed. a story to tell you. My grandmother came here in 1967. And, you know, that I think that was when the airplanes had propellers and stuff. <laughs> and we lived in Scotland. And she flew over in the airplane and she came back from Canada and she brought back these mounted felted things and they were to shove your pajamas in. Like I mounted police? Mounted police. police. Oh, cool. They were mounted police made out of felt. Oh, wow. And in this back of it, you just shoved your pajamas. Uh -huh. So then it looked like this little stuffy mounted police. Yes. Okay. And mountain um, no mounted police, but it's But okay. it was just a, you know, uh, the most amazing thing, and I loved it, and I had it forever. It felt like and it's, um, a good memory. And that was in six. Oh, that's good. And now I'm telling you my age, but that was in '67. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, 1967. There you go. And you were only like uh, two days old. <laughs> yes. Do you believe me? <laughs> I hardly had a breath. <laughs> Dear, 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 dear. Anyway, <laughs> so magically, by next time, I'll probably have to take a picture because I have to have this done by um, Monday. Oh, yes. So I've got work to do. Yeah. But I've got that, I had to get it organized and size and what am I going to do? Because I didn't want to worry about lining it, but I have to make sure I can get the drawstring. That'd be in, a so. handy little thing and something that he'll remember, like I remembered maybe. There maybe you go. Go. Yeah. That would be great. Yes, now. So those are my works in progress and may works in progress for you. Now, last podcast, I made a bathtub out of resin yes and um i wasn't sure what to do with the bottom and it was kind of like do i drill holes do we you know what do we right. do with that great suggestion from some of our subscribers mm -hmm. thank you so much you right. so, so i'm gonna be working on some of those suggestions okay. not quite sure which one yet but they were all great oh, so fantastic. i appreciate that yes all right so those are our works in progress and next we're going to talk about our adventure On today's adventure, Colleen and I went to Guelph, Ontario, and we visited a little store called Woolwich Fine Yarns. Now, is it the same name as it used to be? No, it was a different name. It's in the same place as the other one. But I have to admit, the store looks entirely different. It's very open. It's a small uh, square footage. Right. But they pack in a lot for punch for that. Right, but there's, um, there isn't as much as was in the previous store. But by not as much, I mean, it doesn't feel as, it's open, it's bright, it's beautiful. Why don't we just show you, and we'll have a little video and we'll talk about our little trip to Guelph, Ontario. Our population in Guelph, Ontario is probably around, I think in 2017, they said it was like 130,000. Oh, really? It's really that big, yeah. Oh. It might be 170,000 now. So what we'll do is we'll put that video in of our little trip to Guelph, and then when we come back, we'll talk about it, and then you'll know what we've been talking about. Now, you have to watch till the very end, because um, Colleen knows what's in the end, but it's a little surprise to you as to what was in my neighbor's uh, window well. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Jan used explicits. <laughs> And I said, Reverend Jan, because she's Reverend, she was going to do a um, wedding. wedding. And she says, May, you gotta help me. There's some stuff in my window well. Anyway, I went over to help her. And I said, Reverend Jan. And she says, Okay, I don't want to call her on. <laughs> Anyway, it was quite the, the scene, and the people... Anyway, I, I'm not going to spoil it. Spoiler, spoiler. You'll have to watch the end of the video okay. and see what I'm talking about. So we before we went into the yarn store, we did go in um, and visited some other little stores in the area. Of course, Colleen found this. Cinderella is proof that a new pair of shoes can change your <laughs> life. And you know what? It's a popular little place, Guelph. You know, they had music. They had people outside. Yeah. Lots of places to eat. Then we entered the yarn store. And it is beautiful. You can see that stone wall. Oh my goodness, it's lovely. And they've, it's really well laid out. You can see all what's there as far as needles and 
It was brilliant. I think we can learn from their display. Not overcrowded. Right, exactly. Um, there's some crochet hooks, lots of beautiful yarn. Uh, there's uh, Euclid. Oh, look at, and all kinds of samples. Now, the samples were up high, but anything that was there you could ask and you could find out about, that's for sure. And we really liked the sheep picture that was behind where the cash register was. And there's me having a good look around. Oh, and what can I buy? Rubbing your hands. Ooh. That's right. So excited. And the color, you can see it's open. There's a little table to knit at. As I said, the one, um, I don't know if you'll see it coming up. It's just at the very top on the right hand side that you see. I got a close up of that one actually oh, because excellent. of the, the uh, intricate work involved. It in is that. a color work um, blanket that was done in the round and then steaked. <gasps> there's the sheep. <laughs> There's the sheep. Don't you love that? That that could be amazing. my new favorite poster. Honestly, it is that brilliant. is beautiful. It's very stunning, and it's light and bright. It's really, really nice. I really like how they've set things up. Yeah, with such small square footage. Now, I think when we go around here, I may get another close up of that blanket you were talking okay. about. The intricate work in that blanket and the and designer. The you know, was unbelievable. And then later on, after seeing that blanket, she shows another blanket, I think that was done by the same designer. Oh, okay. Um, if you see it on nice. the table, you could probably talk more about that. Exactly. There it is again. There's that blanket. It Did you know there's beautiful. like, like there's a cat there and everything? See oh, the I animals? Did. And you know what? See I the pheasants and everything? And there's some elk or deer or something in yeah. there. Holy moly, it's beautiful. And those shawls, there it is. There there's it is. a close up. Yeah, fox in there. And oh my goodness unbelievable and that was beautiful now this is a cowl um, that is going to be on Ravelry it's not there yet um, and it's going to be called the Woolwich cowl um, I'll get back to you when I find out more if, uh, when it's up on Ravelry but it's going to be happening soon okay what's happening soon here it comes wait for it wait. Oh, oh there it is <laughs> okay this. can you believe it okay mom skunk and how many babies um i think there were seven babies we counted at one point oh my goodness i don't think i've ever got that close to a skunk before now it had sprayed um and they had come to me because the the people the the people were there for the from the wildlife right and um yeah i couldn't i couldn't believe it oh my but they are goodness. not they are not climbers and um they were not interested in climbing out so now they did end up getting out and we're just not sure how that happened whether they climbed out whether somebody came to get them we know reverend jan had called a friend of hers to see if they could help out well reverend jan was going to do her wedding and then she was like and she was having company um, a whole like a party the next day oh, or something like some kind goodness. of little garden party kind of thing you were awfully close taking these pictures i was i was very close I was very close taking those pictures and Colin kept saying, you're going to get sprayed, you're going to get, because you, you were in the house and I was just coming back and forth exactly. saying, I need to get a piece of wood. I, need to, this. I said, I'm not letting you in the house if you get sprayed. I'm just telling you, I'm not letting you in the house. <laughs> now the people that uh, come to take it, the animal control people came and they said, well, you know, they were here first. They were said, saying to Reverend Jan, they were here first, you know, and she goes, they weren't there first. <laughs> They're just new babies. I was here first. <laughs> It was very funny at the time, oh, but uh, uh, it was quite something. And I, again, I've never been that close to a skunk ever. No. So to get those pictures really is amazing. I thought about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. Now just a little bit more about this, the yarn store. The skunks are amazing, <laughs> but let's talk about yarn. <laughs> so um, the owner of the store, its name is Emma and Emma wasn't there the day we were there. So she had taken a day off. And so the person that we spoke to was Jill and Jill was incredibly helpful. She um, didn't want to be on camera because she wanted it to be Emma's store. And I thought that was very respectful of her to do that. But she had the idea. She t showed us the Woolwich cowl. She mentioned the names of some of the samples that I was admiring. Um, and she just talked about some of the different kinds of wools. I know that they had the Della Q bags. They had the barber cords, which are the um, kind of rubber cords that you can slide your stitches on. They had, oh, it's a circular, almost a little, like a little pouch that you can do. It's from the barber cord company that you could put those cords in if you wanted to do that. So much beautiful yarn. 
and really well laid out. I remember when we went to the store that was there previously, I must have gone around and around and around that store to try and find something to purchase because I was just, there was just so much. There isn't as much, but what's there is amazing. It's a beautiful yarn store. You can see there's a place to sit. The, where the that big sheep mural is, um, poster, is incredible. They've got all their needles are laid out and all the things are in the drawers if there's a size that you might want them to check out. Um, and they've got all kinds of different yarns. And I would love to go back and think about, I was in the, what are we making for the booth mode? Um, but it was, I could go back. I think it's maybe. It's worth a trip going to Guelph. Because it is. it's a happening little place. It was. Uh, a little, it just felt like a nice little community. And I and exactly. I think they really support each other. The stores yes. all around there. So it was great. Absolutely. Yeah. So we had a great time. So that's our adventure. And next we're going to talk about souvenirs. My first souvenirs came from Woolwich Fine Yarns. Lovely store. So once again, I'm thinking about booth. And so I picked up two more balls of suds. Now, the reason why I did is because I know this is, I'm pretty sure this is the O Canada one that stripes. And I'm thinking this one will stripe as well. Not 100% sure, but I thought I'll get that. That will make two more of those washi mitts and it'll make a couple more of the face scrubbies. Nice. So I thought that was going to be good for the booth. And then the other thing that I picked up was another pair of 2.5 uh, double point needles because if you're making some of the uh, Christmas baubles, then you need to have those. And if I can have two of them on the go at the same time, that will work really well. So that's I can't what believe I after up. all the needles that you have that you still buy needles. That's unbelievable. Well, sometimes you have one set and you never you need have another one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I kind of get that. You know, so I have one that I keep with the bobbly kind of stuff. And I thought, I'm just going to grab another one so I could maybe have two going on at the same time. So if I take one with me, then I can have one at home. And there's always a reason. <laughs> and nice little, I love that little bag. environmentally sound bag. Yes, that's so cute. that worked out well. Nice, cute. So that was my souvenirs. And as I said, I'm thinking once that Woolwich uh, cowl pattern comes out. We may have to visit Woolwich Fine Yarns. I'll try my stash, but you know, sometimes I find one skein and not the other one that I need. Um, I don't know, but I, I do want to do that cowl because it was brilliant. So that's that. Now the other thing that I did hmm, was I kind of treated myself, not that I didn't treat myself to that, <laughs> but I, when I was doing the beach days, I'm just going to let you hold that up. Um, uh, Kay Jones had one of these magnetic needle minders that she was using and it is the little beach huts and so I thought you know I would like one of those because they're so cute <laughs> and then you can put it on your stitch <laughs> so anyway I did order it from Etsy it came in great time so this is from Caterpillar Cross Stitch magnetic needle minder they have all different kinds. So they have animals, they have little beach huts, they have all kinds. There was a penguin that I thought about. Oh, I looked and looked and looked. There was a zillion possibilities. So I haven't, when my, we won't even talk about how old my oldest son is. <laughs> when he was born and I was at home taking care of him and he'd nap, what I did, do not ask me why, instead of sleeping, which would have made sense, I started doing counted cross stitch and I made the tops for mason jars. Oh, well, that's And so idea. then what I was doing was for Christmas, then the mason jar we'd fill with something and then the top would be done with wow, that. Wow, maybe you could do that for our booth. Did you think of that? I thought about that. You did. Exactly. It'd be a lot so of work though. For... It could be. But anyway, so that's when I started counted cross stitch and then I had started sometimes you do something that's too much and it was a rocking chair on top of like an old farmhouse porch. It was great. But then my kids got older and they didn't nap at the same time <laughs> and it wasn't good. <laughs> and so what happened is I had tucked it away 
and it had uh, masking tape around the edge of it. Mm -hmm. And then it went all brittle. And it, uh, So anyway, I looked at it and thought, I had put so much work into it, but I thought, I'm not going to be able to get this back. So when Kay Jones decided to do this, I thought, oh, I really enjoy counter cross stitch. Like, it's lots of fun to do. Um, so I may just keep something on the go. And then I need a needle binder. Now, didn't you have a barn that looked like that last time? Well, so yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> This might become an obsession. <laughs> so I did buy when we were at. So we have um, to buy one for every the, project. No, but when we were at the nesting ground, nesting ground. Oh my goodness! Um, that's when I bought the little barn with the quilt thing on it. I thought that I'm thinking. I'm pretty sure Colleen has yes, one of those. <laughs> I wish her memory wasn't so good. Anyway, but then when Kay Jones had the one that matched the thing, I thought, oh, maybe that would be good. So anyway. A little treat <laughs> and I am loving it so anyway all right you all right souvenirs for you what did you get Souvenirs. you know I didn't get anything look at all your souvenirs I, I probably ate my souvenirs <laughs> is what I do well we have um, a little chocolate here yeah and there. we have a little chocolate here and there nice meal because it's a two hour two and a half hour drive almost right. to Guelph for us yeah and we went to Kitchener and Guelph and so there's a lot of you know eating involved that's true so yeah so yeah. that's I eat my my souvenirs yeah and we did a little bit of um uh, secondhand store. Yes, antiquing. Antiquing kind of thing. Yes, so I got a couple of things there, Sue. Exactly. Nothing, I don't want to bore you to death. Like, I think, I feel today I bored you to death with my labeling. No. When I talked about labels. No. Like, maybe they don't want to hear about labels. Well, maybe, but they did. <laughs> so there you go. Sorry, you can just fast forward to the label <laughs> part. <laughs> but I know you want to see the skunks because people commented the last time because we're living in a basically a farm between between our geese and our rabbits and our now our skunks. <laughs> yes, you just never know what's happening. No. There but anyway, go. it's fun in the neighborhood. Alrighty. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Let us know if there's any stores you'd like to see, any cross stitch things that you would recommend or a store that does cross stitch so we could check that out as well because we really like doing this for you. And subscribe if you haven't already done so because it helps us with our channel. So until next time.